Okay, in this video, we're gonna do an epsilon delta proof that the limit as x approaches five of the quantity three x minus one is equal to 14. So that's a linear function. So these are uh, pretty direct. Um, so first let's see what the definition of a limit is. So the definition of a limit. The limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L if, so there's like several parts to this. So if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, so that's like a delta neighborhood, that's kind of an x-axis thing. So if that absolute value inequality is true, then the absolute value of f of x minus l will be less than epsilon. So um, we're going to do a bunch of proofs. I'm not really going to explain the definition uh, here, but one kind of key point is that uh, the absolute value of x minus c uh, can't be zero, can't be less than zero, but we put it in. Um, and what's really uh, being stated there is that x is not equal to c, right? Because if x was equal to c, we would get zero. So uh, we're not actually concerned with at x equals c. It's the limit as x approaches c which is kind of a big deal. Um, so let's uh, talk about a plan that we're gonna use. So the plan looks like uh, we're gonna start with, basically I write down both of those absolute value inequalities. We're gonna start with absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. We're gonna make it look like the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta by kind of algebraically manipulating it. Um, and then what we'll do from there is we'll write delta in terms of epsilon, and then after that, we will write the proof. So the key thing here is that almost all of the work that you do is steps one, two, and three. The proof, which is what you're kind of trying to do, um, is very straightforward once you figure out that relationship. So let's take a look at an example. So we wanna prove that the limit as x approaches five of the quantity three x minus one is equal to 14. So one thing uh, that's a little weird with these is that you have to actually know the limit. So we're gonna verify that it's the limit. The definition won't actually tell us what the value is. For that, you need other like techniques, algebra, things like that. Um, all right, so anytime I do these proofs, I just first write down the two absolute value inequalities that we're gonna deal with. So the first one, absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, and then the other one, the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. And it's also uh, zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c, but that uh, doesn't really factor into the work that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start off by just uh, substituting into these and come up with the absolute values. So it's the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So f of x is three x minus one, l is 14, we just substitute. And then the other one is the absolute value of x minus five is less than delta. So those are the two that come from the definition. Now my goal is to for make the first one, which I call like the epsilon inequality, um, look like the delta inequality. So I'm gonna just manipulate it a little bit. So combine some things here. And then once you do that, uh, you can factor a three out. And then, so that x minus five is good. Um, because if you look at the delta inequality, that has the absolute value of x minus five in it. So what I'm gonna do is take a three out of the absolute value, get three, and then that's exactly my delta um, absolute value. And if I divide by three, I'll have the absolute value of x minus five is less than epsilon over three. So if you look at it, we have this and this. So what I can do is I'm just gonna let delta equal epsilon over three. And uh, now I'm actually ready to write the proof. So let's start our proof. So the first thing I like to do, or the first thing you should definitely do, um, it's for all epsilon greater than zero. So you have to like think about the definition. Uh, so I'm gonna say given that epsilon is greater than zero. Now what I'll do is let delta be equal to epsilon over three, like I found by manipulating it. And uh, so let's kind of work on this. So if we're in that delta neighborhood, so uh, the absolute value of x minus five is less than delta, but that implies that the absolute value of x minus five is less than epsilon over three by just direct substitution. And I'm gonna multiply both sides of that by three to get this. 
and then I'm gonna bring the three inside. So you can see we're just reversing the steps of what we did to find the relationship. That's kind of um, how these usually work. So it's important that you make that um, kind of scratch work be very organized so you can refer back to it in the event that you need to. Uh, I'm gonna distribute to get this. And then I am gonna look back and I see that, uh, so I have three X minus 15 is less than epsilon, which is like basically done except I need to pull it apart into the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So um, I'm gonna do that. So f of x is three x minus one. So this is three x minus one and then minus 14, and then that's gonna be less than epsilon. So we did it. We showed that if the absolute value of x minus five is less than delta, where delta is epsilon over three, then the absolute value of f of x minus the limit is less than epsilon, which was our goal. Um, so then I'm going to say, therefore, we have uh, established this limit. We proved it. And we're done. Okay, so that's one example. I'm going to come back in another video and do two more linear um, examples. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.